Hello everyone. Wish you all a very good and wonderful day. This is Dr. Yuvendar. I welcome you all to uh, Cosmetics and uh, Cosmeceuticals. As usual, let me start with your course objectives, that is your subject objectives. Upon completion of this course, that means upon completion of all the units of this course, you all will be able to understand the key ingredients which are used in cosmetics as well as in cosmeceuticals and along with that you will also understand about the key building blocks of various formulations and the current technologies which are used in the market and then you will also understand about the various key ingredients and the basic science to develop cosmetics and cosmeceuticals along with that you will also learn and understand about the scientific knowledge to develop the various cosmet cosmetics and cosmeceuticals with a desired safety and with a desired stability and with a desired efficacy well now let me start uh, in this video about the second unit that is second part of second unit title cosmetics the biological aspects part 2 well before i start the objectives learning objectives of this topic let me explain to you the ground rules for the class and all the ground rules for the class are as usual same as what i have been explaining in my previous videos and only additional input in this video is I have attached few videos for your better understanding and please go through those videos for more information along with that I also suggest you all to refer the research articles and review articles which are attached along with this video well now let me explain you about the clear structure of the lecture at the end of this chapter of this unit you all will be able to understand and gain scientific knowledge on various objectives like uh, skin structure of skin structure of skin relating problems like dry skin acne pigmentation prickly heat wrinkles and body odor and then you will also understand about the structure of hair and hair growth cycle common problems associated with oral cavity, cleansing and care needs for face, eyelids, lips, hands, feet, nail, scalp, neck, body and under arm. So well, in these objectives we have already covered and we have already completed the discussion about few objects in part 1 that is cosmetics biological aspects part 1 video we have covered up to the objective pigmentation and in this video in part 2 I will be discussing about the objectives like prickly heat wrinkles and body order and the remaining objectives will be discussed further in further videos well now let me start with the continuation part of our objective that is prickly heat as a skin relating problem this prickly heat is commonly called as heat rash or it is also called as miliaria it is caused by obstruction to the sweat ducts the skin care is the main treatment to avoid this heat rashes and it is the heat rash which is characterized by itchy red spots which develop on chest region and the regions under the armpits and between the thighs and it is normally happening and uh, happen to see in regions like hot countries so well uh, basically these as I told you are caused by blocked sweat glands so well you can look into those pictures I have given one adult picture having uh, the heat rashes on the body that is on the chest region 
and along with that i have given a picture of a baby having these heat rashes on face as well as the chest region well this prickly heat when sweat cannot freely evaporate sweat cannot freely evaporate from the skin and sweat ducts become plugged and this inflammation can cause a reddish rash on the body parts so this rashes can be prevented by wearing clothes that allow sweat to evaporate easily as well as bathing regularly and drying the skin frequently so now i will explain you about uh, various measures with which we can uh, prevent this prickly heat so to prevent one has to drink plenty of cool water or electrolyte replacement fluids even if not thirsty that means even if the person who is uh, not feeling thirsty must drink plenty of cool water or electrolyte replacement fluids like electrolyte replenishers to prevent this kind of uh, prickly heat skin rashes and he should be able to recognize early signs of symptoms of these heat induced illness and take appropriate action to prevent serious heat disorders and to prevent one has to spend as little time as possible in direct sunlight and one has to take frequent breaks in cool shaded areas and one has to wear light and loose fitting clothing and one has to avoid caffeine which can make the body to lose water more frequently so well i have uh, given one video that is video representing prickly heat that is representing the prickly heat on babies and uh, it is by the courtesy of uh, fast cry parenting and explaining about what causes heat rashes in babies whether these heat rashes cause pain to babies and the symptoms of heat rashes and treatment and tips and various remedies along with home remedies to prevent heat rashes in babies please watch this video
Hope you enjoyed the video of uh, heat rash or uh, prickly heat in babies. Now we shall uh, look into the next problem relating to the structure of skin that is wrinkles. Wrinkles are lines and creases that form in your skin. Some wrinkles can become deep crevices. Crevices means a narrow opening or a fissure or furrows, a narrow trench and may be especially noticeable around the regions of your body parts like around eyes, around mouth and around neck. So you can have a look at these three pictures. The first picture represents the wrinkles around the eye region and the second picture represents the wrinkles around the mouth region and the third picture represent the wrinkles around the neck region. So what are all the causes for these wrinkles? Now let me explain you the various causes. There are totally six major causes. The first cause is age. As you get older, your skin naturally becomes less elastic and more fragile which may lead to result in wrinkles. And second cause is decreased production of natural oils which dries your skin and makes it appear more wrinkled. The third cause is the fat which is present in the deeper layers of the skin that diminishes and will result in loose saggy skin and more pronounced lines and crevices on the skin and this may also cause wrinkles and fourth cause is exposure to UV light ultraviolet radiation which speeds the natural aging process and that is the primary cause for early or premature wrinkling exposure to UV light breaks down your skin connective tissue collagen and elastin fibers which lie in the deeper layers of the skin without the supportive connective tissue your skin loses its strength and its flexibility the skin then begins to sag and wrinkle prematurely then fifth cause is smoking the habit of smoking can accelerate the normal aging process of your skin contributing to wrinkles on the skin and sixth cause is repeated facial expressions the facial movements and expressions such as squinting or smiling lead to fine lines and that may also cause wrinkles each time you use your facial muscle a groove forms beneath the surface of the skin and as skin ages it loses its flexibility and it is no longer be able to spring back normally into its place these grooves then become permanent features on your face now uh, we shall discuss about the treatment of wrinkles the first treatment is topical retinoids. These topical retinoids are derived from vitamin A. Retinoids such as retinoin, which is also called as a Renova Retin A, as brand names, and Trazerotin, which is available with the names like. Uh, Avage and Tazorac that when you apply to your skin may reduce fine wrinkles, splotches and skin roughness. Because retinoids can make your skin burn more easily, you will need to use a broad spectrum sunscreen and wear always a protective clothing every day. Retinoids may cause redness, dryness, itching and a burning, tingling sensation. 
Second treatment method is by using non-prescription wrinkle creams. Non-prescription wrinkle creams are OTC products or OTC creams, right? Which can be obtained uh, over the counter without a prescription of a registered medical practitioner or a dermatologist. The effectiveness of anti-wrinkle creams depends in part on the active ingredients or depends on the part of the retinol, antioxidant and some peptides which are present as active ingredients which may result in slight to modest improvement in case of wrinkles. With these non-prescription wrinkle creams, your results, if there are any, will be limited and usually they are short-lived because these creams contain lesser extent of the active ingredients when you compare with those of prescription creams. And third type of treatment is rhytidectomy. It is a type of cosmetic surgery procedure used to give a more youthful facial appearance. So now I have a video for you to watch upon wrinkles and this video is by the courtesy of the list explaining about the bad habits which are leading to premature aging of skin and causing wrinkles. Along with that it also explains about do's and don'ts against the aging of skin and skin wrinkles. Please watch the video. There's no escaping the passage of time. You will get older and your body will age. And yet some people in their 60s look like they're in their 40s, while some people in their 30s look like they're in their 50s. So what gives? Some lucky people hit the genetic jackpot, but lifestyle choices and daily routines play a big role in the aging process. Here are some bad habits that may be aging you prematurely. Skipping sunscreen. Sun damage doesn't just lead to skin cancer, it leads to wrinkles and sunspots. Dr. Alan J. Parks, a board-certified dermatologist and founder of Derm Warehouse, told us, I know it seems obvious, but the one terrible habit that will age you beyond belief is not wearing sunscreen. 90% of skin aging is from the sun, so wearing sunscreen on a daily basis is one of the best habits you can get into to keep you looking young. And it's not just the summer sun that does the damage. Wearing sunscreen even on cloudy days and in the wintertime is just as important. Damaging UVA rays can penetrate through clouds and glass, doing a number on your skin health. Leaving your sunglasses at home. Store a pair of sunglasses in every bag you own. According to our conversation with Dr. Christian Subio, a board-certified plastic surgeon, constant squinting on sunny days can lead to major wrinkles. He said, you might be surprised to find that not wearing sunglasses could be aging you. This is especially true during the summer and during winter snows, which can reflect high levels of sunlight, leading to increased squinting. This repetitive squinting reinforces the crow's feet, which are the small lines splaying out from the sides of the eyes. Failing to wear sunglasses could mean more frequent trips to your plastic surgeon for Botox. Hmm, regular Botox injections or a pair of shades? Which sounds more appealing? Oh, honey, you finally got Botox. No, I did not get Botox. Fake baking. We all know the sun isn't your skin's friend. With that in mind, don't ever go tanning. Even the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention points to the very real risks that indoor tanning poses, including increased risk for skin cancer, premature skin aging, and changes in skin texture. Need proof? Check out Tan Mom. And this whole thing's been blown out of proportion. How is that real? I, I, I mean, I... It's time to turn in your tanning membership and embrace the beauty of soft, wrinkle-free skin. It may be an adjustment, but in 20 years, you'll be glad you made a change. Smoking. Need easy-to-see proof that smoking makes you look old? Take a look at some of these photos. They were part of a 2013 study of the physical effects of smoking on twins. Twins who smoked were compared side-by-side -side with the identical siblings who didn't, and the photos clearly reveal additional wrinkles and baggy eyelids on smoking twin. The study, published in the Plastic and Reproductive Surgery Journal, found that as little as a five-year difference in smoking history can cause noticeable differences in facial aging in twins. Even if you don't have a doppelganger to compare your facial aging to, you can pretty much count on smoking's negative impact when it comes to premature aging. Sleeping on your face Unless you're a back sleeper, it's time to switch up your bedtime routine. 
Dr. Anthony Yun, a board-certified plastic surgeon and the author of the book, The Age Fix, A Leading Plastic Surgeon Reveals How to Really Look 10 Years Younger, got right to the point in our email correspondence. He wrote, Sleep wrinkles are real and can be permanent. Sure, sleeping on your face for a night after a bender won't create permanent lines, but if you sleep on your face night after night, year after year, then those sleep wrinkles will eventually stay there permanently. The good news is there's a solution. Just sleep on your back or side. And if you have to smoosh your face against a pillow all night, try a satin or silk pillowcase. Poor skin care. As tempting as it is to head to bed after a long day without washing your face, Dr. Yen says this is a mistake. Makeup as well as a day's grime, oil, and pollution clog your pores and can result in acne. Your skin rejuvenates itself at night and cannot do this very well if it isn't cleaned. Staring at your phone Ever heard of tech neck? Chances are you will soon. Board-certified dermatologist Dr. Joel Schlesinger told us about the phenomena, which happens when you constantly look down at your phone, laptop, or tablet. The forward tilt of your head results in the combination of a loss of neck firmness, physical strain, and premature wrinkling of the skin along the front of your neck. The solution is simple, says Dr. Schlesinger. Hold your phone or device higher when you look at it. Try to hold your head in a neutral position whenever possible and limit the time you spend on your devices. If you're working on a laptop, sit at a desk and place the monitor at eye level. That's not all. Changing up this habit could do wonders for any back pain you might have too. Poor diet. Surprise! What you eat can significantly impact your looks. Junk food and alcohol denies your body the key nutrients it needs to function at full capacity, but the damage doesn't stop there. Dr. Schlesinger explains, A poor diet, specifically one that is high in sugar, can affect your skin from the inside out. Sugar molecules attach to collagen and elastin proteins in the skin through a process called glycation. This process produces advanced glycosylation in products, or AGEs for short. AGEs are free radicals that lead to inflammation, breaking down collagen and elastin in the skin. While the occasional night out with friends is unlikely to do permanent damage, alcohol isn't your body's best buddy either. Alcohol dehydrates the body causing skin to look red, blotchy, and bloated. Drinking alcohol prevents the production of vasopressin, an antidiuretic hormone that the body uses to absorb water. This causes the kidneys to work twice as hard to remove excess water from your system, leaving all of your organs, including your skin, dehydrated. Drinking from a straw. Drinking from a straw seems so harmless. Maybe you even do it to help prevent dark liquids from staining your teeth. At any rate, it might be time to retire your straws, because pursing your lips to sip from a straw can lead to smoker-style lines surrounding your mouth. Dr. Yun emphasizes that these smoker lines can worsen and deepen with any activity that involves pursing your lips, including drinking out of a straw or drinking from a non-reusable water bottle. Yikes. Harboring anger and grudges. Anger, stress, and grudge holding don't just wreak havoc on your insides, they can actually hurt your outsides too. Alexandra Foisy, a licensed clinical social worker and retirement transition specialist, pointed out to us that attitude can make you extremely rigid and uncompromising, and literally stiffens the body. A rigid person who cannot relax is not able to heal. The body does a great job of healing itself, but it must be relaxed to do so. Holding on to anger is also associated with coronary heart disease, while depression is linked to cellular aging. Nobody can avoid stress or anger completely, but everyone can find positive ways to let go through exercise, meditation, and regular social engagement. Well, that was the video of uh, wrinkles. Now we shall move on to the next problem relating to the structure of skin, that is body order. The body order is the perceived unpleasant smell our bodies can give off when bacteria that live on the skin break down sweat into acid. The body odor is caused by a combination of sweat and the bacteria which are normally found in skin. The body odor is most likely to occur in the following regions of the body like feet region, groin region. The groin region is the area between the abdomen and the upper thigh on either side of the body and regions like armpits, genitals, pubic hair and other hair, belly button, anus, behind the ears and the regions in the rest of the skin to a lesser extent. The body order can have a pleasant or unpleasant and specific smell to the individual and can be used to identify people, especially by dogs and other animals. Each person's unique body order can be influenced by the diet, gender, 
health and medication what the person is consuming now we shall look into the causes for the body odor the body odor is caused by bacteria breaking down sweat and it is largely linked to the glands like apocrine glands and most of the body odor comes from these apocrine glands and these glands are found in the regions like breasts genital area eyelids armpits and the ear region in the breasts they secrete fat droplets into the breast milk in the ear they help in the formation of the ear wax or cerumen these apocrine glands in the skin and the eyelids are sweat glands also most of the apocrine glands in the skin are located in the groin region armpits region and around the nipples of the breast area in the skin they usually have an odor and that is from the scent glands which are nothing but the apocrine glands the apocrine glands are mainly responsible for the body odor as i discussed earlier because the sweat they produce is high in protein which bacteria can break down easily the causes for foot odor that is the smell what we receive from the foot region the causes for foot region is most of us wear shoes and socks making it much more difficult for the sweat to evaporate giving the bacteria more sweat to break down in smelly substances the moist feet also raises the risk of fungi developing on that particular feet area which can also lead to unpleasant smell now we shall uh, look into the treatment so to treat this body odor one has to wash daily with warm water one has to have a shower or bath at least once a day remember that warm water helps in killing off the bacteria that are present on the skin if the weather is exceptionally hot consider bathing more often than once a day and you can also prevent by selecting your clothing that is you select your clothing which has natural fibers and these natural fibers allow your skin to breathe resulting in better evaporation of sweat natural made fibers include wool silk or cotton and you can also treat this body odor by aluminum chloride it is chemically aluminum trichloride and this substance is usually the main active ingredient in most of the anti perspirants if your body does not respond to home remedies mentioned above talk to a pharmacist or talk to a doctor or a dermatologist about a suitable product containing aluminum chloride and follow the instruction along with the prescription given by them avoid spicy foods is another way of preventing body odor the spicy foods like curry garlic and other spicy foods which may have the potential to make some people to sweat more pungently some experts believe that a diet which is high in red meat may also raise the risk of developing more rapid body odor the next treatment method is by using botulinum toxin this is a toxin which is produced by clostridium botulinum it is the most poisonous biological substance ever known 
so better you use this only under the supervision of a registered medical practitioner or if not under the instruction of a dermatologist so this botulinum is the most poisonous biological substance so however a very small and uh, controlled doses are being used nowadays in various fields of medicine the individual is given approximately 12 injection of botulinum toxin in the armpits region and it is a procedure that should not last more than 45 minutes the toxin blocks the signals from the brain to the sweat glands resulting in less sweating in the targeted area one treatment can last from 2 to 8 months so in addition the patient who is suffering from body odor or the person who is having severe body odor may treat this even by surgery when self care and medical measures are not effective at treating severe body odor a doctor can perform a surgical procedure which is called as endoscopic thoracic sympathectomy that is also abbreviated as ets that destroys the sweating controlling nerves which are present below the skin of your armpits and this procedure is a last resort and runs the risk of damage to other nerves also and in it it may cause damage to other arteries also which are present in that particular area it can also increase sweating in other parts of the body known as compensatory sweating well i have a video for uh, your explanation related to body order which is explaining about the various causes of the body order please do watch and enjoy a pungent blend of onions cheese and cat urine with hints of is that wet goat most of us don't need more than one whiff to identify that generally unpleasant characteristic smell we call body odor but it's a surprisingly complex phenomenon influenced by our genetic makeup, age, diet, and hygiene. So what is this odor exactly? Where does it come from and can we do anything about it? To start, you just need two things to produce that familiar scent. Your armpits own secretions and the bacteria that feed on them. Most people associate body odor with sweat, and it's an important piece of the puzzle. Your body has millions of sweat glands and they come in two major types. Eccrine glands are found all over your skin and secrete mainly water and salt. Apocrine glands on the other hand develop at puberty in your armpits and a few other places on your body. The sweat they secrete is full of proteins and fats. By themselves, these secretions are usually odorless. That's where bacteria come in. Every square centimeter of our bodies is covered with thousands of bacteria. Many microorganisms thrive in moist environments like our armpits. There, you can find about a million bacteria per square centimeter, one of the highest concentrations anywhere on the skin. Lurking in this throng of microorganisms are species of corny bacteria, staphylococci, micrococci, and others. When these bacteria feed on the proteins and fats in apocrine sweat, They turn the odorless compounds into new ones that can smell very unpleasant. Some of the worst offenders may be sulfur-containing chemicals. Those give body odor its oniony aroma. Carboxylic acids are in the mix too, adding notes of cheese. These molecules waft up from the armpit and can be sucked directly into our noses, where they're trapped and detected by an array of specialized receptors. Those can recognize odor molecules at concentrations of less than 1 in a million. So what determines how strong your body odor might be? It depends on the resident microbial populations in your armpit. 
and the nutrients that your glands provide them with. Your genes help determine what compounds you produce and in what quantity, so everyone has a slightly different set. In fact, a gene variant that virtually eliminates body odor is common in people of East Asian descent. Adrenaline increases the ratio of apocrine to eccrine sweat, so body odor can be more intense when you're nervous. Bacterial composition and concentration also varies between individuals and plays a part. Even what you eat can have a small effect on how you smell. So how can we deal with body odor? Washing the armpits with soap and water helps, but won't remove all the bacteria, since many are buried in deeper layers of the skin. Deodorants, however, inhibit bacterial activity and mask odors at the same time. Antiperspirants work by forming tiny gel plugs that block sweat glands, drying out the armpits. While we continue to battle body odor, scientists are trying to understand it. We don't know why the brain often interprets these particular odors as off-putting, but some researchers have proposed that secretions from the armpit could have a positive function too, like cementing social bonds and providing a means of chemical communication. We don't know yet if that's the case. For now, body odor seems to be just another smelly part of the human condition. Hope you enjoyed the video of body odor. Now I have given you few references for uh, this video contents. You can go through all of them. And now let me summarize whatever has been discussed today. In this video, we have discussed about prickly heat, wrinkles and body order as major objectives of this unit. In our previous part, part 1, we have completed the objectives like skin, structure of skin, structure of skin relating problems like dry skin, acne and pigmentation. And the remaining objectives will be covered further in further videos. Well, I have come to an end with a high note as a quote and the quote is skin care is like dieting. You have to invest your time and your efforts. There is no instant miracle cure and this is a great quote given by Karen Grant. So with this I conclude the second part of cosmetics biological aspects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.